you have some water and then you put some ice in and then that height changes it a little bit because the ice displayed some volume of water. And then when that ice melts, does the height change or stay the same? Ugh, I can't solve this problem. Eureka, I know how to solve your problem. What do you mean? Do you remember the story of Archimedes and the Golden Crown? Ah, uh, that was when Archimedes was trying to prove that a golden crown was fake by immersing it in water and formulating that the buoyant force of the crown was equal to the weight of the water displaced. And that way he was able to find the weight of the crown and hence the density and prove that the golden crown was a fake. Yeah, I understand that, but I don't know how Archimedes' principle relates to my problem. Look, I'll show you. So, in order to solve the problem of how the water level will change due to the partially submerged ice melting, we have to look at the problem in two steps. First, we'll use Archimedes' principle, which states that the buoyant force of the ice is equal to the weight of the water displaced. And from that, we can solve from, for the height due to the partially submerged ice. And secondly, we'll look at the instance where the ice has already melted, and from that, we can solve for the height due to the melted ice. So first, we can do a force balance on the partially submerged ice, where the buoyant force is equal to the weight. So density of water times volume times gravity is equal to the mass of the ice times gravity. And from that, we can solve for the height, which ultimately equals mass of the ice divided by area times density of water. And we'll prove how this height is now equal to the height when the ice has melted. So volume is equal to the mass of the ice over density of water. And so the height is equal to mass of the ice over area times density of water. And we can see how these two heights are equal to each other, meaning that the water level does not change. Oh my god, you're a genius. With the power flow of mechanics, you have answered my question. But still, in the true spirit of science, we have to experimentally prove this. Let's go! Alright, so for our demo, we'll just be looking at how this ice melts. We can see it's uh, almost at the 300 milliliter line, according to my beaker mug. So not very accurate, but that should, that should be enough. So we'll just see how until it melts and see if it changes the volume. So now as we can see, the ice has completely melted and the water still remains at the 300 milliliter line. So as we can see, the volume of the water does not change even as the ice melts, which is uh, kind of amazing, honestly. But yeah, that's it. That should prove it. So we proved it. Science! Science.